All right. <laughs> this is me 13 years ago. <laughs> it's like one of the only bald photos I can find. <laughs> you can feel bad for me or ask me about my chemo treatments. Go ahead and ask me out. We're in West Hollywood, and you're sure that I have a motorcycle and I wear Tevas. <laughs> <laughs> but fortunately, I've never had cancer, and unfortunately, I am in fact not a lesbian. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> My hair started falling out when I was about five. One spot, then another, then another. I was diagnosed with alopecia, an autoimmune disease that causes white blood cells to attack my hair follicles. I was a five-year-old George Costanza. <laughs> I have since learned that alopecia episodes are triggered by anxiety, which means I must have been super stressed out about something going on on Sesame Street. <laughs> get enough cookies ever. <laughs> I only noticed when my mom pointed it out because I was mostly losing patches that were easily covered by the rest of my hair. And even if I had noticed, I was five years old and I didn't really know what normal was back then. My parents were both from Turkey and we lived in Jersey. I used to think that speaking at a deafening decibel level all the time was a normal thing that all American families did. There was a lot that I thought was normal that really wasn't for most people. Most kids were bringing Lunchables to school for their midday meal. I'd show up with rice cakes, salmon spread, and an apple. <laughs> there was no trading lunch with me, so I knew I was different, but I didn't yet know how different. Then in third grade, we got a new student in from Canada. Now most people think that Canadians are sweet and quiet, but not this bitch. <laughs> it was fucking huge. She came up to me while I was eating my salmon spread peacefully, keeping to myself, and pointed at my bald spots. And she went, ew, what is that? And grabbed me by my neck and my arm and threw me down on the lunch table. <clears throat> and she called to everybody in the cafeteria and said, Ew, look at Denise's hair. Ew. And all the kids gathered around and started screaming, Ew. <laughs> and I could not get up. I begged my parents to not make me go back. Surprisingly enough, though, being Turkish in an ignorant suburb of New Jersey was more offensive than being a bald third grader, so people just stuck to insults about my salmon spread and completely dropped the alopecia. <laughs> and then freshman year of high school came. In that year, my father lost his business, my grandfather died, my parents filed for bankruptcy, and I lost all my fucking hair. <laughs> it comes in threes. No, wait, fours. During that time, I found hair everywhere, tons in my brush, I was fully shedding, clumps and loose hairs, and then suddenly, I was bald. I was devastated. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. I felt ugly and disgusting. My salmon rice cakes were hideable, but this, this was something everyone could see. And I was 13. Being visibly different from everyone was too much. I wanted hair like... DJ Tanner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Kelly Kapowski. <laughs> Hell, I would have settled for hair like Donald Trump. I <laughs> 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 completely bald and completely depressed. I even lost my eyelashes and eyebrows. I actually wished I had cancer, so I had a good excuse. <laughs> Too bad we weren't living in SoCal at the time, or else I would have drawn on some badass chola eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> the business, the bankruptcy, and the dead grandfather, those were all things my parents couldn't control, but they could control my hair by taking me to the best wig maker in Jersey. <laughs> the man himself had a mullet. And you'll never guess, he made me a mullet. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I've earned those. <laughs> Let me just point out that I already have a big head. 
At 13, it had already clashed with my tiny body. This mullet increased my head. I couldn't do it. My parents, with the best intentions, made me wear it out once. But when I got home, I had a complete meltdown from guilt that my parents, who were already at rock bottom, had spent a shitload of money for a dead animal shaped like a mullet because I was a ball <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a lot of fucking anxiety. I didn't want to fail my parents, and they didn't want to fail me, but we both felt like complete fuck-ups. One day, I dramatically declared to my dad, I'd rather be dead than burden them with my baldness. And my father broke down in tears saying he didn't know what to do anymore. Never before have I, or after that, have I seen him cry so much. Thankfully, my parents agreed to let me be homeschooled. So I disappeared from everyone. I only talked to my teachers and none of my family ever invited anyone over. My poor brother couldn't even invite his friends over. I feared rejection and ridicule. I feared humiliation. I feared other people. When there was a knock on the door, I would just disappear. I spent a lot of time alone. I didn't see one single friend in a year and a half. <laughs> By senior year, my hair began to grow back. So I got to go to prom, have a boyfriend, be a teenager for a moment. It was the best moment. The second time I lost all my hair, I was dating Chris. At that time, I had my hair back, but not my self-esteem. He was a loser. He was a barista who prided himself on his side job, delivering blow-up jumping castle things for kids' parties. <laughs> oh yeah, and he had an arrest record. But he wanted a date, and I figured, who else would want me? What almost 30-year-old thinks a 19-year-old is good for relationships? Oh, an unhealthy one. Perfect. So, of course, I moved in with him. I'm guessing I was stressed because of the shame I brought to my parents by moving in with a loser, so I lost all my hair again. He didn't want to have sex with an old girl, which made me feel more rejected and even less attractive than I already felt. Then I found out that he had cheated on me. But guess what? I stayed with him because who else would want me? Who would want a bald, flawed woman? Despite all of that, my hair started growing back again, and I decided to move to LA to go to design school a few months later. If anyone knows here what design school is like, <laughs> that shit will make your hair fall out even if you don't have allocation. <laughs> it is so fucking stressful. You gotta know your typefaces or else. <laughs> the design students, we didn't sleep and we cried on a regular basis. <laughs> I immediately started losing my hair again. It had just grown back and now it was gone. This was the third time. By then I was getting used to it. There was still a fear that this was it. Would I look like Sinead O'Connor for the rest of my life? But that voice in my head grew quieter and I started having fun with wigs. <laughs> I realized the power of hair. I had long blonde hair, the mermaid. <laughs> Or a variety of mom hair. <laughs> or, or a more natural look. <laughs> I felt free and, and like I could change my personality. I could be Kelly Kapowski at any time I fucking wanted. When I went bald the fourth time, I splurged on a blonde wig from the hair club for men and women. And yeah, bitches, I'm also a client. <laughs> it got a little weird when dating, I'll admit. I started seeing Ryan. I wasn't sure if I should casually tell him at dinner, like, you know, should I just tell him that I'm bald or just surprise him? Like, surprise, I'm bald! <laughs> So we go back to his place. I decided not to surprise him. We went back to his place. He pulled me towards him passionately by my neck. 
and my wig gently slid over my ears. <laughs> and I couldn't see his initial reaction. <laughs> we still ended up having sex at time explosion. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was okay with it. Turns out he surprised me with a super small penis. <laughs> Guess what? Guys with all types of penises don't really mind a bald head. Once I let go and let them see my head, they grab it and stroke it in the bedroom. <laughs> well, it was soft and hairless, so maybe they thought it was something else. <laughs> it was easier to be intimate with men. Though I felt freer in LA at design school, I still wouldn't go in public without a wig or a bandana. Some men would get drunk and try to take a peek. Women just stared. Lots of people gave me those pity smiles. That's <laughs> <laughs> a pity smile by both. <laughs> <laughs> One day, I was at the beach with a group of friends who hadn't ever seen my head. One guy asked to see. I slowly started to take my bandana off, which for me was as vulnerable as being on a stage at a storytelling show talking about all of my issues. <laughs> it seriously felt like I was about to step off a cliff. My heart started racing and my breathing accelerated. But they all put their hands on my head at the same time and stared in my eyes with these big smiles on their faces. For the first time, I let a group in public see who I really was. None of them were Canadian, so they accepted me fully. <laughs> it was truly a turning point for me. I was finally able to make real friends. I'd been hiding from them in high school, but here were suddenly people that didn't give a fuck about my outside. That acceptance began to show me that there isn't actually anything wrong with me. So I lose my hair sometimes because I have an autoimmune disease. That's like saying I have chicken pox or restless leg syndrome. It's a fact about me, but not a defect. Seriously, is restless leg syndrome even real? <laughs> I haven't gone bald in nine years. Although getting ready for tonight may have cost me a few clumps. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> But in general, there's much less to feel anxious about. Mm -hmm. Feeling un unworthy takes up a lot of your brain, and those thoughts have been appearing less and less. I still have bald spots all throughout my head, believe it or not. I just got a lot of full hair. Um, but I don't even think about it anymore, unless it's a really windy day. <laughs> or I'm jealously glaring at those bitches who pull their hair up to those top knots in yoga. <laughs> I mean, why does it have to be that high on her head? <laughs> As I get older, I've learned that everyone, th <laughs> everyone thought that they were weird or wrong throughout adolescence. Everyone has their thing. Mine just happened to be a thing that everyone else could see. Lesson learned. Be nice to high schoolers and don't trust Canadians. <laughs>